try that. There we go. Thank you very much for letting us know that the sound was not coming through. Woo. We had a good conversation by hey, ourselves. Listen, didn't we? I'm just going to launch right back into sharing day because that's coming up and uh, it's very exciting. Yeah. So sharing day. Um, normally the site is open, so we're not going to be doing that this year, keeping everybody safe. But the herb sale is still on. Um, order online at our website. Oh, um, I think I've got a link for that. Too. Perfect. Um, so order online and we'll go ahead and make sure that all of your orders are put in and on our normal sharing day during the normal time period. Well, no, we're actually doing it a little bit earlier this year. A little earlier. Yeah, we're doing it from 10 to 2 only because okay. it's just herb sale, just That's fair. orders. So it's going to be, I think, a drive through pickup for herbs. No yep. browsing. We're not going to have any extras on hand. So put in your order and then come by between 10 and 2 on April 24th and we will have your order ready and be able to put that right in your car and have you on your way. Um, depending on how voluminous our orders get, we might be sending out time slots for people. If we get a ton of them, we don't want there to be any crowding on Green Bank Road. Don't want anybody... Uh, being unsafe there. So uh, just keep in touch for that. Um, but otherwise, we are here tonight for our Tavern Games Night for our Playing With History this month. And we've got our tavern sign, yeah. our Madeira, our beer, our lovely tavern of food, and a couple of games planned. Yeah. Um, and. What you guys missed in our very animated conversation yeah, at the beginning. We were miming, really. We really were. And it, you know, the the thing worked in the pre-check. I don't know why. It, there's always something. Technology. Technology. Um, is that my wife Carly and I are, are big gamers. Um, we are very proud nice. dorks or geeks or how, whatever. Yes. Whatever. Nerds. Thing you want to call us for that. We are proud. That flag is flying. <laughs> Those dice are rolling. Yes. Um, I'm staring at my big box of D and D stuff. Yes. Um, I've got an eye on um, half of our collection, which is about two dozen boxes of board games up here. Yeah. So I know we're that in it. Our board chair has asked me to run the Revolutionary War um, one shot. Oh, that, that would be so much fun! Yeah. Yeah. All right, if you're not a D and D dork, that is okay. If you love a good story. That's what D&D is all about, so don't be shy. It was fun. I had yeah. to pretend like I was drunk when I wasn't. That was <laughs> fantastic. Yep. Um, so um, as we were saying before, um, taverns are huge on, like back in the day, they were not just places for you to go and kick back with a drink. They were gaming stations. They were places of music. They were also places of news. So, I mean, the revolution was planned and plotted in in tavern so city tavern in in philadelphia um i think that it's the dragon inn or the green dragon I, I can't quite remember and francis tavern also in new york city they were big on um with the the sons of liberty so nice um if you have a chance to check out um after the pandemic or i'm not too sure i know city tavern is going through some changes right now. Um, so, hey, we're spreading news right now. Um, Absolutely. Feel free to check them out um, once they kind of come through their transition because they are they are wonderful. But in the meantime, we do have our very own Jessup's Tavern in Newcastle. Um, they have a wonderful beer list, great authentic tavern or tavern fair. Um, and, and their staff is all dressed yeah, nicely. Nice. Love it. Yeah. I, it's such a treasure. I remember that's one of the first places that I wanted to go. So yeah, when I first moved here. Um, so tonight we're going to just, we're going to game with you. Um, we're going to show you guys how to play some games. We'll have um, a camera just kind of showing the um, playing area as we play to, through a game of cards. We're going to be playing put. Put, yep. Which is similar. You'll get to see my hand. Oh my, which is better than mine. No, no, not my hands. I'm not a hand model. Oh. I mean my, my card hand. Oh, so yeah. you guys can tell me if she has better cards. She can look probably on the screen, but I hopefully could. she won't cheat. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. <laughs> oh, me. Actually, I'll show you soon. Um, it's actually really hard to cheat with these cards. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so we're going to be playing with um, with items that we actually sell in our gift shop. Um, so you can purchase those if you'd like. Um, and I thought that I had. Yeah, apparently I don't. Oh, yeah. Here you go. Here is our shop link. Um, so 
we have the playing cards in our gift shop. We have the dice in our gift shop. Um, so that's always fun. Um, we do have, um, if you can hear in the background, we do have some music playing. Green Bank is on Spotify. Love Spotify. Um, so I have that playing in the background. We have that list um, available for you guys to listen to. Um, and I don't know, I think we should pop some Madeira and cheers our very first playing with history, I think. Okay, I'm good with that. So this this, this program um, has been a brainchild of mine and in our board chair alleys for quite some time. Um, but timing just hasn't really worked out. We trialed it a few years ago when we did our Civil War event on site. It was a lot of fun. It really was. Um, so it'll look a little different when we're in person, um, but... For now, um, we invite you to um, create a food board for yourselves. Um, for a drink, they would have had Madeira or ale or wine um, or whiskey, really, and depending on how early you wanted to go rum. So, um, yeah. if so you've got a deck of cards and a friend, a couple of dice, you only need two dice. If you've got it on hand, you want to join us, feel free. I'll be explaining it every step of the way. And I will be asking a lot of questions. <laughs> Um, so cheers, cheers to our, our inaugural program. Fantastic. Oh, Madeira. Mm -hmm. So good. Yeah. So anybody, uh, if you haven't had Madeira before, it's a fortified sweet wine, um, made in Madeira, made in Madeira and, um, in Portugal. Yeah. It's quite lovely. It's, um, it's similar to port. If you've had port before, very kind of thick and, mm -hmm. and sweet, um, <clears throat> And uh, yeah, very nice. It used to be um, more of a lowbrow drink. Mm. Um, so it was something that was given more to the working class. And then um, there, through a series of uh, incidents, um, more sophisticated society, yeah. you know, discovered it and discovered how delightful it was. Yeah. And it quickly went from being like a very cheap drink on par almost with ale to being huh, quite, quite expensive. Um, I think we even see that in modern times where things start out as just something that is common and then all of a sudden becomes very, uh, can be very elite. Yeah. So, so and it, it's, it's, it has a very interesting history. I believe we've talked about it before. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to talk your guys ear off about it. If you want me to tell you more about it, um, hit us up in the comments and I will be happy to do a post later. Um, but otherwise, I think you guys are here for the board games. I'm here for the cheese also. Um, but it's, That's fair. Um, cheese is good. Cheese is life, yo. So we're going to start off with um, put. put. And yes. we're going to open up our next, or Carly's hand screen. Um, it is a little fuzzy. We've played with it. Um, it'll cut into being clear and crisp and wonderful. We weren't able to resolve it, unfortunately. So we will be calling out the the cards yeah. as as we see it, so that you guys can better. Um, well, luckily, you guys are gonna see the same struggle that we're gonna have because we're all used to modern cards. Modern cards are lovely. They've got a little plastic, nice little rounding on the edges. You break them in a little bit and they're really easy to work with. Um, and they have numbers on them. Um, these cards, however, do not have numbers on them. That's not a good example. Um, they just have well, the was symbol. Expensive. That's fair, that's fair. And so is paper. So instead of having a five on this, it, you just have to just visually see that that's five of them. And that's not too hard when it's five, but when you get to like nine and 10. This might have caused it, problems um, during our playthroughs. It, 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 can, it can get a little confusing. Um, so that's all right. We're, um, we're adaptable and um, we're smart cookies. Well, so, one of us is, I'm not. I, I will say, however, um, for those of you who um, are like most of the rest of the world and math is a little bit of a struggle. Especially in public. Public math. Public math like this, it's going to be really difficult. So please be forgiving. All right. So with put, the first thing we're going to do is draw cards to figure out who the dealer is. Aha, we wow. tied, guys. We both All right. Got this is like a game seven. of war. 
All right. Pick your next one. You win. All right, I'm a dealer. Good. I was a dealer in the practice room, and I was not good at it, guys. <laughs> not good at it, indeed. All right, so we're going to deal three cards to each person. Let me make sure I get my little pile over here. I'm getting my cheese and grapes. All right. All right, so this is a trick-taking game. What's a trick-taking game? A trick-taking game is when you compare cards and whoever has the best cards wins the cards and wins that trick. <coughs> so in a lot of trick-taking games, um, either aces are high or kings are high, and um, you go from there. And whoever has the highest one that they put down wins the trick. This one's a little different though. Threes are high. So it goes three, two, ace, king, and so on down to four. So four is the lowest, three is the highest. It's a little nuance there. So um, as you can see on my hand, which you're- Oh, you're, right, no, I'm sorry. You're focused I'm already on the camera over it. here. Don't look at my hand. Man, I'm just gonna eat cheese. So you can see I've got these two are my highest and um, this is gonna be lower than that. So we're just gonna go ahead and slap some cards down and see um, who wins this trick. Oh yeah, okay. You ready? Yeah. yeah. Totes. All right, I'm gonna put a face down and then we can flip them up. Flipping. All right, so. I win. Stacy had a queen I against my 10. Yeah. So you win that trick. All right. Do I get money? Not yet. Oh. We have pennies here to use for scoring and for. All right. Next one. I'm monitoring chat. That's why I keep looking over at my phone. That's fair. I'm just flipping mine. That's fair. I win. Oh. No, I don't. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, no. I put down a two, which somehow in this game trumps a five. Man. So I win that trick. So now we're, we're winning in alternate the universe. Yeah, I'm sorry. All right, last one. Mm -hmm. I had another two. Son of a gun. I had another I five. All right, so I won two tricks. She won one, which means I win the hand. Uh -huh. Oh, this which is means when you get I one. get three points. So I'm gonna take three pennies here and those are gonna be my points. So first to five points wins. Oh man. So the nuance to this is if you get your three card hand and you decide there is no way you're gonna win, you can say, I put, and you oh. forfeit the entire round and the other player gets one point. Oh, that's fancy. Yeah. So find that really interesting Yeah, that you really have to look at your cards and go, am I willing to attempt? So like on that round, I had the two twos. Mm -hmm. There was no way I was going to put. No, yeah, I should have, I should have put, but if I had had some lower cards, yeah, I might have. So do you want to deal the next uh, handout? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Three cards each. So one for Carly. These cards are also very they're thick. very thick. Yeah, very thick. All right. It's fun though. They look like they're hand drawn. It's kind of yeah. nice. The uh the symbols are are nice and uh you know. Yeah, they're very they're very they're very fun. Uh, they are. And they definitely help you get into the mood of, of being in a real tavern setting. Yeah. All right. So I've got here. I'm, I'm not sure looking. I'm just going to appreciate these. that. So I've got this one, which um, is not very good. And that one is also not, not terribly great. Um, so I think I'm going to say I put and offer you a point to forfeit this round. Right. And I can't fight that, right? No, I don't think so. Um, like I can't say on guard anyway. <laughs> No, I think we can just basically forfeit anytime we want. So I had a four and a six okay. and four is the lowest you can offer. So I was not going to win with that one. Uh, okay. And the six was also, that's the third lowest. So, well, so you officially put, right? I've officially okay. put. All right. So I had a six. Okay. Oh, wait, where is the, da, 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 da. so I had a six. Okay. 
I had a seven. Okay, that's not terrible. And I had a four. Okay, yeah, you would have put if I hadn't. That's absolutely I for really sure. Would have. Okay. So now we're three to one. So there's a little poker element. There's in a little this poker like element. Like having a poker face. Um, oh man, now I've got Lady Gaga. And, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> um, I the way I'm reading the rules that um, that we found, it does seem like the non-dealer gets the option of put first. Mm. That makes sense. Um, so. If I had said I don't want to put, then you would have had the opportunity, mm -hmm. but you really like the sure other person. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. All right. So next round. Welcome, Jim. Welcome, Dave. Allison. Mike. Welcome, guys. Yay. Thanks for joining us. We're playing a little put. All right. Welcome to our sparkly tavern. Next hand. Score is three to one. <sighs> Spoiler alert. I'm losing, like always, against Carly. All right, so I am the dealer, so you have the option first to put if you would like to put. I would not like to put. All right, I am also not going to put. So. I first cards. First cards. All right, I'm, I'm putting them face down that way. Uh, flirp a derp at the same time. Nice, you win the first trick. Huzzah. I put down my four, which is the lowest scoring card. Get that out of my way. Okay, ready? Ooh. Oh man. Okay. What happens when we tie? So this is basically spoiled. So spoiled goods. Spoiled, so nobody gets the points off of that. Well, that's crummy. So it's now one to nothing still. We've got one last card. Mm -hmm. Flipping. Uh -oh. oh, so I got that trick. Man. You got the other trick. There's one spoiled. That means this whole hand was spoiled. No. Nobody won. It was a tie. So no, no points be had. That just shows you compromise. Just joking. Always compromise. <laughs> All right, your turn to deal. Teamwork makes a dream work. Yes, always. Okay, a little, little ham. Yeah. Enjoy your tavern fair. We're here. We're we're having some delicious Madeiras, some um, um an amazing, if I don't say so myself, mm -hmm. um, English mild. English better kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, for those of you that are just tuning in, um, Carly will be showing you her cards. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes time to play them, we will read them out because we do understand that um, for whatever reason, despite it being on the same yeah. Wi-Fi, it being a really good network, we updated it specifically because we were doing so many online programs and we wanted to make sure that you guys had a good experience. Um, for whatever reason, it's it's we can't really worry. So yeah. that's all right. Uh, you can see the symbols. You can probably even count the symbols. Yeah. And there's no numbers on there to read anyway. All right. So you guys can see what I've got. And you dealt. So I have the first option to put. I am not going to put. I'm in it to win it. Oh, man. All right. First cards first. You ready? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. That's mine. That's fair. Because that's, um, I have to count these. Public math is hard. Mm. 10 versus 5. Yeah, we did say that we were going to say that out loud. That's fair. All right, next one. Queen versus 9. Yep. <clears throat> I need to make sure that I'm actually putting them into the thing. You don't, you don't necessarily have to. I'm bringing them over. Um, all right, last one. Yeah, what is this guy? Ooh. Is he the king? Or the, no, he's a jack, right? Yeah, he's the joker. He's got the stripies. Joker or jack? Or jack, yes, what I mean. Jack. Um, yeah, so Jack, in this game, three is the high card. So I won all three of the tricks in that hand. So I win three points, which puts me over the five-point game win. And I'm here sobbing into my cheese. It's really not a bad place to be. No. You've got cheese. You've got happiness. I mean, you have cheese and you have coin. That's It's five pennies. 
I mean, well, six. I mean, if we were gambling with like real money, which they would have done. That's fair. Yeah. Um, it's actually interesting. I was reading how um, certain, like when um, playing cards were first brought in and there was Puritans and stuff, that there were people that actually got fined for playing card games. And, oh, yeah. Um, Heathens. Yeah. Terrible people. Yeah. But it's like the history of card um, cards is really interesting, and no one really knows the origin. Um, but they did; they're they're from all over the place. Like they can't be nailed down. Like some people say it's from Asia. Some people say you know uh, mm -hmm. somewhere in Europe or Britain, yeah, or who, wherever. Um, but our playing cards are mostly from, um, despite how we wanted to. Uh, and that's you no. Know, what's the word when you when you're a kid and you try to leave your parents? Oh, emancipate? Yeah, emancipate. I'm used to using it for in histor historical terms for slavery. Mm -hmm. Um we wanted to emancipate from Britain, you know, because we were yeah. the the stepchild that could. But and, still we like our, our monarchs. But we, we really liked everything <laughs> that, we wanted to be separate from them, but we're like, you know what though, what you're doing over there, I like that. You know, there's always been a little bit of a fascination with royalty. They've just got that aura and it's it's really just the the historic significance of everything yeah. they do that gets scrutinized i don't know That's well tough. i'm interested how that changes with the oprah interview but i haven't seen it I've i haven't heard. seen it either but i've seen it blow up twitter and facebook uh, no if you guys watched it let us know um <laughs> let us know what you think um but most of um early americans cards came from the um from london mm -hmm. and then there was one <clears throat> um card maker who was able to print all four colors and he gotcha. did that and his business just like exploded mm -hmm. um I actually have his name ba -ba -ba -ba. uh lewis i cohen um so he actually learned in england he spent spent four years in england mm -hmm. learning how to play oh. um and learning how to, to, to do it. So he began publishing in 1832. Okay. Um, and in 1835, he felt like he'd learned enough that he actually started, like he built his own machine. So he pulled an Oliver Evans, just I'm hoping with a little bit less than okay. Um So then he, um, his business became public in 1871 okay. under the name of the New York Consolidated Card Company. And then this one was, um, this company was responsible for introducing and popularizing corn indices to the English pack, making it English easier for, um, to play for players to hold and recognize the hand. So that's when the numbers and like everything else where you were saying like, it's a little bit more difficult to read these because these were pre 1875. Oh, okay. So, okay. Or, that makes sense. Yeah. Right. Cause it is hard when you're, and you've got the spread um, to see exactly, like these two cards look very similar next to each other, but one is a 10 and the other is a nine. So you really do have to spread them pretty far to really know what you're looking at. Right. Um, a seven versus a, uh, a six, for example, again, it's hard to tell until you really get them spread apart. So. But it also makes the game a little bit more thoughtful i yeah. feel like you're, you're taking a little bit longer and i just quit doing a, a quick glance and then going back to your phone you're you're really immersing in the moment because you do have to count it and you have yeah. to math mm -hmm. which is kind of nice yes yeah. yeah absolutely um so um well hello jenny your mother is watching well hello mom how you doing thanks uh, for joining us this is because we didn't call her <laughs> Oh no. Oh, and Allie's Mom, watching too. You. Hey, Allie. Um, so, for those of us that are just joining us, or for those of you that are just joining us, um, we just finished playing Put. Um, so, that is a card game that, um, when does it date back to you? Do we know, or is it just um, early American times? Yeah, early American. I'm not sure, but it's a trick taking game. So, for those of you who are familiar with trick taking games, um, it's a very kind of basic version of that. Yeah. Um, the scoring is just a little, I think the scoring is where the, the yeah. interesting part well, and lies. Being able to fold uh, ahead of time where, you know, you just, you don't want to risk your opponent getting three points and you right. instead just give them one. I think that that's pretty interesting because, you know, you and I do play a lot of trick playing games and, yeah. um, and that's just an interesting element that I don't think yeah. I've seen in another it's game. A, it's a pretty low scoring win too at the five points and winning an entire hand gives you three points. So that one point forfeit yeah. really kind of plays in. You really have to evaluate whether or not it's worth it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and hey, Mary Page, thank you, Mike, for letting us know. I, I When I flipped over to make sure I had facts correct, because, you know, 
cares about facts. Real facts are important, um, especially when you're in a museum. The only facts I care about are game rules. Well, I, I care about our community, and oh. so should you. So I mean, history. E it's, it's your it's your area. You are on the board of directors. <laughs> I'm just gonna remind you. I'm not saying I don't care. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. not my strong suit. Well, I switched out of our live feed. So if you guys do see me re looking down, I am checking the live feed. I I'd say I'm not checking Facebook, but I am. But I'm checking what you're saying. Yeah, our our three. Um, techies are all napping and covered in fur so either i'm pretty sure right they're not techies boomer likes to close my laptop well i mean he's really good at it though he's really good at telling me i shouldn't work when i really should be <laughs> that's fair that's fair um so again if you guys are just joining us um we have some um tavern music please join us for the playlist we've put that link up there for you um and we will also link it um let me see. Um, I will link it later um, in the chat. It is a little wonky. Wait, can I edit this? No, never mind. I'm not going to get into that. Nope. Um, so if you could, we've got a playlist. Uh, Green Bank is now on Spotify. Um, so kind of stay tuned as we put together playlists. Yeah. Um, so this one is the Playing With History Game from the Tavern playlist. Mm -hmm. So we've got a, a variety of different um different styles of music that would have been heard because again it's not just just like today where we've got the we've got the wonderfully beautiful speakeasy bars and mm -hmm. we've got uh, even speakeasy bars vary on what their level is mm -hmm. um mike is wondering what's in your mug what's in my mug well um a very beautiful tavern wench came and uh brought me she's calling me a tavern wench very beautiful tavern wench i'm still a wench <laughs> Um, is this your homebrew? Your this research? is. This is. This is the uh, the the. It's a British Heather ale, so it's brewed with Heather tips, uh, oh, with a Scottish excellent. ale yeast. It is most excellent. Yeah, I'm totally brewing this again. It is delicious, mm. Mike. If you'd like, we can make this happen for you. We know where you live. <laughs> um, those in the know. Those in the know. Yep. Also I drinking can't. Madeira here. Yep. Yeah. Um, so delicious. it's. They would have been drinking ale or Madeira, um, fun fact, and I know I say this on our Facebook page a lot, but Madeira was actually uh, George Washington's favorite drink. So nice. uh, it's actually very interesting. We've also kind of posted what the inauguration um, booze list was. Oh, yes. Uh, Man. Holy, and my in-laws think I drink a lot. Well, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's it's probably comparable. I I totally off topic down a rabbit hole. Um, I worked for a Coliseum, um, like a, a like venue. The Coliseum? Not the oh. Coliseum. Um, it was uh, the Charlotte, what, back when the Charlotte Hornets uh, that basketball game was down in that area. Um, and the, um, there was a very large band. Was it Aerosmith, Rolling Stones, something had come through. Um, Somebody with a big tongue. Yeah. And uh, on contracts for artists like that, they put in what's called a rider. And the rider basically says, have all this fun stuff for me available um, at my women will. And that was quite a list. <laughs> but I, I imagine the inauguration list was uh, pretty fun for all the uh, barrels and barrels and bottles and bottles. The and amount of alcohol was ridiculous. And also, like, one of the fun things that um, I think Allie and I really like looking at, and we'll, we'll dork you into it at times, but mm -hmm. where um, certain historians were like, okay, I want to try drinking, like, a colonial just for one day. And most Gosh. people can't make it past, like, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. No. But then again, stuff is a lot stronger now because we've kind of, like, science yeah. and stuff, but... Yeah. And anyway, um, so we have a nice tavern fair here. Um, so we have some meats, some cheese. We've got some fresh fruit. We've got some nuts. All this you would have found in a tavern back in early America. We've got um, our, our tankards of ale. Cheers. Cheers again. I probably now we're on the same temperature. It would have been served at there. Mm -hmm. And brewed in house, which it also yeah. would have been. Cellar temperature. Um, nice. We just finished playing put. We've got our tavern music going. Um, 
so I think it's time for Hazard. Hazard, man. Um, which you were telling me is, it's a variation of craps. Yeah, so it's um, pretty much the earliest version of craps. Um, uses two die. Craps needs Madeira. Oh boy, yeah. Uh, the rules get pretty complicated, so I don't know. Uh... It's fine. <laughs> They get easier to understand the more you drink, I think. I think that's how it goes. Yeah. Um, that's why Vegas is popular. So I'm going to start out by teaching a very basic, easy version um, that can be easily played with um, kids at home without any gambling. Or with, you know. Do you mm -hmm. remember our first? I do our remember playing with history. our playing with history with the Civil War. The, the sweet little blonde girl that we had a table out of kids. nowhere. We had the, we just, like. What there was, was a it? phrase. I don't know, Allie. If you're on there, you can tell us what phrase that they were shouting. But we had a, a big group money, of, big money, yeah, I think. a group of kids at a table, and this was a very easy oh, game. Big to, whammy, big or, whammy. No whammies, no whammies. No whammies. That's, That's what it was. Whammies. So, um, yeah, we we taught them how to play, and um, just because it's a very easy game. But then we did introduce the gambling bit, so um, there was much excitement. Mm -hmm. um, I did want to point out, it's interesting. I was looking at these, um, these wooden dice. Um, they were, you know, very, very crudely made. They're just, um, you know, blocks well, I mean, of wood. Back oh, then we didn't have huge manufacturing. No, 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 absolutely. Um, but what I'm noticing is it, on modern dice, the opposite sides will always add up to the same number. So on a D6 like this, a, a, a six-sided dice, for those who are not as geeky as I am, who know all about the D6s and the D4s and the D8s and the D20s. Um, the two opposite sides will always add up to one plus the highest number. So on a modern die, you will find the one is always opposite the six and the three is always opposite the four. Uh, but on this one, they are not. And I, I don't honestly know what the strategy is behind that. I, I feel like that's a good way to build a die is to put the opposite numbers opposite each other. But, yeah. but that not. could have been just like with playing cards before the, the name yeah. or the, the um, numbers were put yeah. on it, that this is how it was done. If you guys want to purchase the dice or the, um, the playing cards that we're using tonight, they are available in our gift shop. Um, uh, with USPS right now, please do allow a little bit of time for processing mm -hmm. um, because it just takes a long time. If you yeah. guys are local enough, we will try to deliver yeah. it ourselves just to make sure you guys get it. I am a local courier. So she is. I'm our person that doesn't go outside. My face on ring if you uh, order something in your local. So, um, so hazard. So like I said, much like craps, um, we're going to be rolling two die at a time. And I will start with the easiest rules. Um, that's fair. So the first rule that you have to learn is the first time you roll the two die on your turn, you can't roll a two, a three, or a 12. Right. If you do that, you automatically lose. Um, so I'll go ahead and roll. So, yeah. so I get a five. Okay, not bad. Um, so after that first roll, then you get to roll again. And this time in our basic version, if this roll is a five, a six, an eight or a nine, and this one's a six, um, this is gonna end up being what's called the main. So this is the main number that I am going for. Um, so from here, if I roll a two or a three, I lose. If I roll a six, I win. If I roll, and again, this is the basic version. If I roll a seven, I'm gonna lose. So two or three or seven is a lose. A six is a win. Anything else I'm gonna get to roll again. I know. No whammies. No whammies. No whammies. All right, I roll seven. I lose. You did this in the practice round too. I did, yes, I did. Too funny. All right, so I lose. Now, you may be wondering, what do I lose? Um, my dignity, my pride, um, my self-esteem? Yes, all of those things first. Wow, um, this is an intense game. Though. Yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, I'm in it to win it, and I didn't win it, so. She's very competitive. 
Let I used to be. I've calmed down. You have. You I have calmed down. Calmed your competitiveness. <laughs> it's not about winning. It's about just me being the best I can be, and I'm not being the best I can be. It's also the journey and the story, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> it's also chance. And let me tell you, um, I used to brag all about how I was the master of shoots and ladders and candy land. <laughs> Those are all just chance. Um, <laughs> Mike is asking if the losing numbers are always the same. The losing numbers are always in this basic version. First roll can't be a two, a three, or 12. Rolls after that can't be a seven, a two, or a three. And that's the basic version. We're going to get into the more complicated version here shortly, but we're going to do a couple rounds with this basic. And then maybe we'll add some betting. Ooh. And then maybe we'll add some crazier rules which I'm I will in. keep track of and uh, you'll just have to trust me. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Oh man. All right. No whammies. So I have right. a 10. Roll a 10. So not a two, a three or 12 for the first one. So you're good to go. Keep so on keep... rolling. I'm going to try to roll into the Yeah, sir. All right. You rolled an eight. So eight is now your main. Okay. You rolled again. You win seven, two or three. Okay, four, that's fine, you keep rolling. Seven or two or three, you lose. Four, keep rolling. <laughs> Six. Six, still good. Eight, what was your original number? 10. No, it wasn't. Eight. Cool, I win! <laughs> correct us if we're wrong. Please I correct us if we're wrong, Chad. Like, I was so focused on making sure you guys could see what was going on <laughs> that I totally forgot what I said. Oh, I had a 10. No, because a 10 isn't a main. Okay, then it was an 8. Cool, well, I it was a 5 or it was something. How much money do I get? Well, that's the thing. Right now, you just get extra pride, cool, extra dignity, extra self-esteem. So I'm basically back up to zero from you whooping my butt on the last Yeah, hand. okay. So let's start with, um, what do you think? 10 pennies each? Sure. Add a little betting to this. Can we buy a gun with this? You Do you remember when you could gun? used to go to the store and be able to buy like the little candies for like pennies and a nickel? Yes. Man. I'd go to my grandma's house and we would go and buy those things. Hey, Barb. Okay, hold on. You went to your grandma's house and she charged you money for no, the no, candy? No, sorry. My grandpa would give us money and he would give my brothers like loonies, which in Canadian speak is a dollar bill, but it was a coin. And then he would give me a toonie because I was nicer and he liked me more. <laughs> and a toonie is $2. Wow. So, yeah. That's awesome. I wasn't as destructive as my brothers. That's fair. Um, so we would go to the local store. And when we were really younger, it was a bike ride to get to there. Okay. Um, and then otherwise we would just walk. Okay. Okay. But <clears throat> you would buy little candies. And then I would try to straighten things up to be able to get more candy. <laughs> Will work for candy. Yeah, yeah. Nothing to really change. <laughs> Is this why your brother developed a um, uh, candy entry fee for his room later mm. in life? It sounds it sounds related. I don't think so. I think that was just he was greedy. <laughs> it was because it would always happen right after Halloween. Oh, okay. and because That's we lived in the country, like because we were rural. And it would take longer to get from place to place. We would end up getting the bigger candy bars oh, yeah. called chocolate yeah. bars in not America. Um, so we would get chocolate bars and he would, you know, charge those. That's fair. I preferred my chocolate to his company, so I didn't pay him very often. <laughs> That's fair. All, All right. right. So we're going to play some more dice. All right. This time so how many dice are we playing this with? It's only two. It's only two. two. So it's not two each, it's just two for the whole table, correct? Well, yeah, because, um, you know, like in Vegas, you just pass the... Although I don't... They probably disinfect them now. I would hope so. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to play again. So this time we're going to um, do some betting. So let's ante up with um, a penny each to, uh, to start. There's my penny. All right, so that's... Um, Two cents to say I am not gonna roll a two, a three, or a twelve, right? Yeah, yeah nine, Se seven. <laughs> I'm just gonna go back to my cheese. That's what I'm good at. <laughs> All right. So um, did not roll a two, a three, or a twelve. So I'm gonna roll again, and the first 
five, six, eight, or nine I get. Um, that is a 10. That is not any of that. 10 again. The dice are rigged. 10 again. The other one was rolling them. Yeah. Seriously, 10 <laughs> again. How is this happening? I'm going to switch out one of them. Here, blow on them. They have cheese on them now, too. Fantastic. That'll make them lucky. 10. <laughs> wow, guys, you are watching a miracle. Is this okay, even like six. statistically possible? Yes. All right. So I got a six. So that's my main now. Um, so if I roll a six again, I win. If I roll a two, a three, or a seven, I lose. And oh, otherwise, lucky number seven. So um, let's bet again. Okay, bet what do you think I'm going to win? No. One. You I'm going to bet two. Whoa. You got to you up your ante. Ow. Your, no. I don't know how to ante. Okay. <laughs> All right. You're the gambler in our family. <laughs> I'm the gambler. Oh, God. That's bad. how we have our waffle maker. Okay. This was a six, by the way. We're going to remember that this time. Ten. Put this out again. Seven. Oh, I lost. She got my money. I get her money, although what's mine is hers. All right. So two, three, twelve, you lose. Six. All right. That's not bad. All right. Roll again. Find your main. Mm -hmm. Eight. Eight is Eight. your main. Eight. Eight. Not ten. Oh, we didn't bet. We did not bet. I'm throwing two in. That's not your file. That's the <laughs> no, bank. Not. Oh, man. <laughs> it's been a day, guys. <laughs> All right. You got a nine, uh -huh. ten, something. It's a ten. It's a ten. That's <laughs> five. Not bad. Seven. Oh, oh no. no. You lost. Oh, man. Okay. So if you guys are interested in purchasing um, the uh, Playing With History package that we have, um, it tells you how to kind of set this, this theme, like the ambiance. It also has the rules for um, the games that we're playing tonight as well as two others. So an additional Ooh. card game. Okay. And an additional dice game. Nice. Okay. Um, so that is available in our gift shop. Um, so feel free to, um, to do that. It's a $5 um, donation. I'm going to call it a donation because it's not. I mean, we really appreciate your support. Um, yeah. If you want to support us with out purchasing um please do donate i believe there is a donate link on um on, our on this post and, and you can certainly go through our, our website to yeah. donate if you go to our facebook page there is a donate button there absolutely um with the pandemic i know it's hit everybody particularly hard yeah. uh small nonprofits um we've been hit incredibly hard yeah. we're very thankful for the grants that we've gotten yeah um Carly and, and our board chair, Allie, have been amazing at writing grants. So they've, they've definitely secured us for that. But um, every little bit goes a really long way. Uh, it doesn't go to funding my third house. I've got one. It's a, <laughs> <laughs> We've got a bungalow. Um, so it, it, it all goes really well. It helps support our sheep and helps yeah. provide programs like this. So hopefully you're noticing that our audio is a little bit better. Um, so we were able to get a, a new fancy mic to go yeah. with this. Um, so that's helpful. And then for our sharing, they were also going to be trying to utilize some of the, the items that we were able to get for, yeah. um, to help us increase your experience. I'm trying to convince our livestock coordinator to let me put our GoPro on one of our sheep. I, I don't think this is something that could have a no attached to it. I feel like well, but they a headbutt, but and if they headbutt, it's broken, which is like where I can see that there being a problem. Well, I mean that's if it's like right here on their forehead. Well, you're going to put it on their nose. I don't know, but like remember, they can dangle from there. Do you remember when we tried to halt or train like Buttercup and her sister and how yeah. not great it went? Do you remember that time I lost a sheep at a festival? Yeah, it was Buttercup. <laughs> yeah, it was Buttercup's. It was. Um... Oh, 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 yeah. Oh gosh, my mind is blanking. Daisy. Daisy. Yes, was Buttercup Daisy? and Daisy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Daisy. Yes, I lost yeah. Daisy at a festival. Yeah, she only came back because Buttercup was tramping, crying, tramping around a festival, around people, and 
and stuff the, and things. And, and, and the pig farmer caught her. The pig farmer caught he did her. a flying tackle at a left field. <laughs> no sheep were injured. No sheep, no people were injured. <laughs> it was a close call. <laughs> we had to send her then board chair running to get them to close the gates to the festival. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. She slipped out of her harness. She did not like it. No. All right. Hazards with the ever-growing list of rules that are similar to craps. So fun fact about craps. Yeah. Um, it is rumored that craps originated with Roman soldiers playing with the knuckle bones of pigs. Okay. So I've heard the phrase knuckle bones as like a... Well, bones were a very common thing to, to make dice with. If you look um, huh. at certain Viking... And and like old school, like when like the the reproduction places, mm -hmm. like we're playing with wooden dice. Um, co common or like uh, more modern dice are made out of um, acrylic or resin. Some are made out of metal. Um, but um, before in the before days, um, they were they were made with bones mm -hmm. in addition to wood. Um, so as, as a you know whales or whatever, at least not one, not they would turn yeah. those into. So um, the Native Americans would actually make dice out of bones and they would throw them into bowls and there were they had a, a series of games and maybe we can yeah. do um, do a program on that. Yeah. Um, so let us know if you guys want us to do a program on those. That's a good idea. Yeah, no, not at all. Yeah, there we go. I'm using my food. Yeah, that, no, you do that. You you go for it. But um, yeah, so if you go to like websites like Grim Frost or something like that, they okay. do have no, I like bone dice, which is interesting. Nice. All right. So we're going to start out the same way we did last time. Um, we're just going to roll the die and see who goes first. Mm -hmm. So got a five. Give it a roll. You got a 10. You're going first. Wee. All right. So again, two. Uh, oh, yeah. Betting. Let's betting. Cash that, money. Betting. we got to get ready for Vegas, Carly. Oh, yeah. We've already promised my aunt that we're going to take her. Let's see right there. There's her back. All right. A six. All right. So it's not two or three or twelve. So you're good. So is that my number? Is a six is my number? No. Oh. Okay. So you're, hold on. Really? So your first roll is always just not two, three, or twelve. Oh, okay. Okay. Second. Before you do your second roll. Yes, ma'am. So now you get to call your mm -hmm. main. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it can be anything five to nine, including a seven. Last time when we were doing it, we mm -hmm. excluded the seven. So now you can call five, six, seven, eight, or nine. Okay. Eight. Okay. You got a four. Dang it. That's all right. So. Oh, that's awesome, um, Allison. What, 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 she, what she's taught um, Native American games, Lenape in particular, which is amazing. Nice. Because this used to be Lenape. Yeah. Property territory. Oh, that's really cool. That's cool. Um, nice. So. I lose. No, I didn't say you lose. Trust me, if you'd lost, I would have just immediately, like. Yeah, you would have you lost. Me with it. All right. So. I'm all the food. This is our dinner, by the way, guys. <laughs> so I'm not being a good thing. Like, this is dinner. And let me say that lunch was very light. So. All right. So you called your main. Yes. Um, and you called. Eight. Eight. All right, so this first roll is called your come at. Okay. I mean, okay. Okay. So if you had rolled an eight, mm -hmm. you would have won. That would have been that. If you had rolled a two or a three, mm -hmm. you would have lost. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you had rolled an 11 or a 12, this is where it gets complicated. If you roll an 11 or a 12, that's when it depends on what your main was. Your main was an eight, which means an 11 would have meant you lost and a 12 would have meant you win. Okay. This is not a rule I'm expecting you to memorize mm -hmm. at all or anybody else. I have it written down over here. I'm still reading my, reading my notes. But now, since you didn't roll your main, you didn't roll a two or a three, you didn't roll an 11 or 12, this is now what's called your chance. So this is basically your new main. Okay. If you roll this again, you win. If you roll your eight, is that what you said mm -hmm. you called? 
you lose. Oh my. If you roll your two or your three, you lose. If you roll an 11, you lose. See, if you roll a 12, you make so much money. Yeah. All right. So give those bad boys a roll again. Blow on them. Luck be a lady tonight. Luck be a lady tonight. You roll a six. Damn. You are okay. Keep rolling. Cool. Four. Hey, I win. You win. You rolled your chance. Yay. All right. You get those two pennies. Cash money. I know. We should have bet more. Should have. Should have. Should have. Should have. All right. So now I'm going to go. So again, this is the first roll. No twos, no threes, no twelves. Cash money. No threes, no twos, no twelves. So I'm Nine. going to go. Nine. All right. So now I get to call my main. So I'm going to call seven. You know, yeah. sevens. Yeah, they're Comic. out there big. So seven. Um, it's because you roll them all the time. Yeah. So seven is the most um, most. Um, what's the word? The highest percentage. It's the common like, like the um, yeah. most frequently rolled number because it can be a one or a six. It can be a three or a four. It can be a two or a five. Are um, we really big into statistics and data? Yes. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a bit of a, a geek that way. That's why you're a project manager. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna call a seven. So if I roll a seven right now, I win. All right, oh bet bet. Mm. You put in two pennies this time. Put in two pennies. You put in three. Okay, I put in a third. All right, bet nine. All right, all I'm right. Assuming that no one wants to watch us go past anymore. So <laughs> did you win? I just rolled a seven. I Man. just won. I had to check the camera for that. <laughs> nice. This is when the crowd goes wild in Vegas. Ah, she just won, like, we're going to call $300,000. Yeah. Um, so I'm pretty sure in, uh, in craps, and it's possible in this as well, that uh, I'm just skipping over that roll that I would be able to keep going. As long as it wasn't a two or 12 or mm -hmm. three. But I want to share the love, so oh, you wow. go ahead. I'm going to put in two uh, two pennies on your. your I don't trust myself. So, <laughs> so I've got ten. All right, ten. Not a two, a three, or a twelve. So you can call your main. Six. Six. All right. I'm going to put um, two more pennies in. I'm going to just empty with you there. All right. Dang it! Seven. seven. Hold on. Hold on. Oh no. Seven is your chance now. All right. So roll another seven, you win. Roll a six, you nice. lose. Son oh, of a biscuit. Oh, man. Oh, roll dang a it. Six. Man. Man, me and Murphy. <laughs> you and Murphy. Man. All right. Let's keep going. Okay. All right. Cash money, guys. This is the big win. We need to gamble first, Carly. Oh, yeah. I forgot. All right. I'm really running low on I cash, know. guys. I have three <laughs> pennies left. All right. I rolled a nine, so I didn't lose. Here's my uh, my come out roll. I rolled. I didn't call my number. No, you didn't. I so did that roll is bogus. Does that mean I lose? Sure. Okay. I lose. I didn't House rules, rules, guys. House rules. Oh, right. I forgot those were shabby nuts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Not a two or three or 12. It's a nine. Call your number. Six. All Summer right. Biscuit. It's okay. So that's a nine. So it's not a six. So nine <laughs> is now your chance. Okay. Roll the nine, you win. A six, you lose. Seven. Okay. That's all right. Keep going. Four, keep going. Six. Dang it! No. It's okay, we didn't bet. Oh, God. <laughs> no, we didn't. Oh, man. Oh, man. We are terrible at this. We're going to assume that, like, here you go. Oh, okay, thank you for that penny. <laughs> Just going to assume that I did, like, put a penny in. <laughs> you know what? No, I would have put two because I've been putting okay, two in. So, in you. the interest of honesty. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so this is a this is a fun game. Um, it, it's a little like I said, I'm I'm literally still every round reading right. the rules, mm -hmm. and uh, 
when it comes to craps, I really don't understand. You just what, throw the dice and hope. You, yeah, you roll the dice. And there's a lot more betting in craps. But this might actually help you better understand craps, which that is good. Is, yeah. Because yeah, then we can absolutely. travel again. I know that we've already got... Oh, I'm not allowed to play craps in real Vegas. Only in the fake Vegas. What if I give you money and you're not allowed to spend past that? No, I would just lose it. See, the, the great thing about the fake Vegas um, craps games that I went to is that nobody cares because it's not real money. So mm, yeah, they, they kind of fudge the rules. Yeah, they were really constantly. nice about that. They were very nice. Um, and uh, if you rolled too many bad rolls in a row, they just kind of let you keep going. Um, or like if your first roll was a, a bad one, they would just roll again um, which is how I won lots of lots of money um, and tickets for prizes at uh, whatever well, it was your holiday party yeah, for work. A, a work event I know other people do it for like charity events and stuff and it's it's really fun but. you know it'd be kind of fun if we did this like and, and to be honest guys like this is a complete like this is not prescripted because we don't do that um, if we tried to do something like that for Green Bank, what yeah. if we did like a fundraiser right. where we did like tavern games? Feedback, and, guys. Yeah, let us Feedback. know if you guys think that that's a good idea. If you guys would um, hang out with us and do that. I mean, it's yeah, only a couple of stations. We hang out. I teach some games. You bet. We've you got win some We've stuff. got um, Hazards. We've got Wist. We've got There's In and In. Games. There's so many. Yeah, so yeah, many. Absolutely. And little. you know what? We might bring some Canadian in it and bring some Crokinole. Crokinole. Um, Crokinole. That's just dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, it is a lot of fun. Um, Crokinole is a Canadian game that um, is basically just flicking a little uh, disc it's finger across. Curling. It's yeah, finger curling. Yes, a little curling with your finger on a on a board. Um, you know, we might pause our stream and. Uh, then do a, a playing with history after hours. I have a meeting after that. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. So, so that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. I, I would have a lot of fun doing that. I'm going to have to pitch that to our board. Yeah. We'll see how many of them are still watching. Yeah. You guys do this. And let us know if you guys think it's a good idea, if it's something you guys would want to participate in. Um, I'm sure we'd have some good prizes. And Oh, yeah. We come up with some great stuff. And, and of course, this is all post- Pandemic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Post-pandemic, once everybody has gotten their needle in the arm, and yeah. what is it called? The Fauci-ouchie? The Fauci-ouchie, <laughs> yes. The Fauci-ouchie. Um, but we, I mean, the, the drinks that we can make are pretty fantastic, yeah. too. So I know when we do Folklore Friday, Fish House Punch is really popular. Yeah. And that will start the betting, I think. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, we almost did it for tonight, but our food was substantial enough. So we just chose right. ale and Madeira. Yeah, that's fair. But, um... Yeah, so um, I just wanted to mention just from some of the stuff that I work on with Green Bank, um, for those of you who are um, kind of itching to do family gatherings and um, celebrate some of those occasions that over the last year you've been postponing um, or holding off on, um, Green Bank is still available for your private events. And right now, Delaware is allowing um, up to 25 folks to gather in private. Um, and we can host that indoors at Green Bank and actually up to 50 outdoors um, in our beautiful grove. So um, gorgeous. I love that grove. Yeah, the grove is fantastic. Um, we've also had some folks bring tents into the parking lot yeah. and do a tented event outside. <laughs> Um, so if you're interested, um, please visit our website. We've got information there on renting the hall. It's a community space. It is um, very reasonably priced compared to other banquet halls. Um, no catering requirements, very DIY. So you can bring your own food. The only thing is that we do have to adhere to state guidelines. So I think right now buffets are still not yeah, allowed. Still no buffets. So no, no kind of um, everybody puts their self into a food dish all has to be served <clears throat> up but, but we otherwise folks like, bring, like uh food trucks have been in our parking oh, yeah, lot yeah. for events and food trucks are hurting right now so i mean yeah. show some local love and, and hire yeah. all those food trucks they're they're amazing people their food is fantastic yeah um Honestly, so, like it's better than some food that I've had at weddings. Yeah. So we've had folks um, who want to do their weddings. They want to do the um, 
first birthday for the baby that was born last year and nobody could. Yeah. Um, Quesaneras and um, different events like that. All that things. Yeah, absolutely. We're happy to host um, at at our core. Green Bank has always been a community space. Um, And renting our facility versus renting something like the Sheridan or what have you, not only are you getting a very unique space, but you're also helping support local history um so please do consider that yeah um if you're not hosting any sort of event right now please do feel free to either uh donate to us or purchase some items um we are going to be um posting our sharing day items shortly our herb sale um items are online oh yeah Um, absolutely the first time ever they are on our website i know um and which is exciting. We've already gotten our first order and it was so seamless. Um, Absolutely. It was the most seamless experience. I've Mm -hmm. been doing this. This year was my seventh green beer, green bank, green beer. I was getting my beer. Um, My seventh green bank anniversary last week. I've been working here for seven lucky years. So that would make this my eighth year with sharing day because I, attended the sharing day eight years ago yeah. in order to see the site as to the location we were going to yeah. have our reception. So, um, and that's how we got involved is we had our event. There, when so. we speak about renting it, we do speak from the heart because it is yeah. something that we chose when we had a plethora of other options. Um, and that's how we got involved. So, yeah. I mean, really do um, consider that, but yeah, it's seven years. Yeah, oh, man. So, and oh, the other cool thing about the um, herb sale is that if you are on our website and you see some other items you want to order, go ahead and throw that into your herb sale order and we'll just have that ready for you and put that in your mm-hmm. car for you on the 24th. So feel free to look <laughs> at the other items and we'll go ahead and just throw that in with everything else. Yeah. So, and tomorrow I'm going to be adding a few different items. So Ooh. we're going to be adding some shirt designs and t-shirts and these are all made ready for you. So if there is a custom customization that you would like, please do let me know. Um, there is a comments, a section in every, uh, in every order, I believe if not shoot me an email, info at greenbankmail.com. Um, but we'll be having shirts. We'll be having um, candles. We have soap. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a delightful variety of tumbler. We have tumblers. That tumbler's yeah. really cool. Um, so I can do those either with final on the outside or I can do those etched. Um, glassware. So, yeah. yeah, we've got glassware. We've got nice so many cool things. Um, we do have our brandy snifters. Um, you that's can't hard really, to see. Yeah, it really is. Oh no, that one's not on. Uh, there we go. Um, so yeah. we can we can save you guys the hassle of USPS. I know I've I've put off mailing a few things just because I'm so worried that they're going to get lost in the mail. I think I need to bite the bullet and just do it. Yeah. Um, but um, please do. It's always to support us. I feel like our prices are reasonable. I hand make all of your items with the exception of like that or, you know, the dice and what have you. But honestly, looking at the dice, I might start, start making them. But, um, <laughs> so if there is anything that you guys want to add, please let us know. Um, otherwise, we look forward to seeing you at our next event. Uh, our next event is actually on March 23rd, I believe. March 23rd, fun. Um, um, Allie is teaching a hand sewing class. Ooh. Um, so she's teaching people how to make a uh, house and I, it's a German word and it's it's like essentially a pocket that you would tie on to your um, oh okay yeah, yeah, yeah which is neat so we've got this she's got um, an upgrade for it which is cool um, she had Sassy B who did our lip balm class mm-hmm. yeah um, she had her do some uh, beeswax things to help kind of keep the thread going and oh the nice nice okay um so that's available we do have spots available for that please do sign up um the cutoff is coming up soon um, so that we can make sure that we have the packages sent out to you and they get to you in time. But that's that's our next event coming up, and I'm really excited. In fact, that we've got um, our annual meeting. Um, I believe that's April 14th, um, and that's very important. It sounds boring, but it, yeah. it, we, we we try very hard to make it not. Be. <laughs> <laughs> so the annual yeah the annual meeting is when. Um, you guys get to hear more about what we've done in the past year, what we have planned okay. for the future. Make sure that we are doing what you feel Green Bank should be doing. 
And then also you have the chance to vote and confirm the board members um, that we have. So it's really important to, to have you guys involved um, as our community. So um, for those who are not yet members, uh, please do become a member and have a chance to vote and get that kind of inside information and that inside voice into what goes on with us. And for those of you that are already members, please keep an eye out for the emails and announcements that are going out. Um, at the very least, please be sure to take the, um, we have a survey that's going out, which is our voting, it allows us to do the remote voting, um, but then also kind of watch our uh, our program for that and so see what's going on. Anybody that RSVPs ahead of time for, that is a member for our members meeting, and you can purchase um, the membership when you're RSVPing, but we'll be sending them out free tea. Ooh, and, free tea? Um, hopefully cookies, but I need to find a COVID-friendly way to send out cookies. Okay. So just so the, a way that we can all, like typically what we would be doing is serving food and drink to everybody yeah, while we all kind of talk. And I, I really miss that. So we were looking at a way to try to bring that sense of community back, even though we're all separated and we're all going to be doing this via Zoom. So we're going to be um, sending you guys out tea and that way we can all drink the tea together. Um, yeah. So we can be having a communal it's beverage. community. Community. Well community. done. Yeah. Um, so that's what we have. So that is a, a you know, tavern learning the news, right? There you that's go. what's happening. All right. Um, but otherwise, we're going to thank you guys for joining us. We're going to cheers to guys. a wonderful evening and happy weekend, everybody. Yeah. Hey, thanks for joining us. <laughs>